Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The Swedish military has had a long history of excellence, including the country's air force. And though it was not a direct Cold War participant, the government had an apparent interest in maintaining a strong defense throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s. In 1979, engineers at Saab began work on a new multi-role fighter, one that could perform against air and ground targets while also providing reconnaissance. The result would be the JAS-39 Gripen, a delta-wing, canard configuration aircraft that, to many, looked like something out of a science fiction movie. Despite being designed in the 1970s, the Gripen did not actually have its first flight until 1988. Moreover, it did not see active service until 1996. This was due to an extensive testing and improvement process in which the company and its engineers sought to create the most capable and versatile aircraft possible. Multiple variants of the JAS-39 have been developed each more advanced than the next. Saab has a number of partner companies that help produce fuselage sections, wings, tail surfaces, landing gear, avionic systems, and weaponry. Saab has a very unique assembly process in which the various components are worked on simultaneously, mostly by hand. Each of these is put together at one or more facilities, then shipped to a main plant for final assembly. This is where the separate components are joined together into the final aircraft. From here, the major systems will be integrated with the plane. This includes things like flight controls, navigation, communication, and sensor suites. This modular process is key to producing a high quality final product, as each component is assembled by teams specializing in only that one part of the Gripen. Despite the long development time and unorthodox assembly process, the Gripen is widely considered one of the most capable military aircraft in the world. This stems from many factors, including the plane's relatively high cost effectiveness. For instance, the Gripen is known for its low life cycle costs, making it affordable, both in terms of procurement and operation. This doesn't translate into a loss in performance, however, as the Gripen is capable of executing a wide range of missions, including air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground attacks, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. Its unique delta wing design and the inclusion of small wings, or canards, at the front of the fuselage drastically improve overall stability and handling. Combined with its fly-by-wire flight controls, this allows it to achieve exceptional agility and high G maneuverability. 
Though Sweden is the primary operator of the JAS-39, it's not uncommon for airmen from many different allied nations to encounter the Gripen while in flight. In the world of military aircraft, the Gripen is most similar to the Dassault Rafale. In fact, the two planes were being developed simultaneously, though the Rafale was not introduced until 2001. The French multi-role fighter features the same delta wing canard design that makes the Gripen so stable. Though the Rafale has two engines instead of one, it boasts many of the same advancements, including fly-by-wire controls, a fully digital cockpit, and state-of-the-art sensors, avionics, and weapon systems. The Rafale is produced by Dassault Aviation, headquartered in Paris, France. The company has several production facilities spread out around Europe. One of the largest and most advanced is located in St. Cloud. This facility incorporates state-of-the-art 3D modeling technology to provide engineers with new, valuable insight into their work. Each of the facilities has its own specialization, from producing parts and system components to assembling finished military or private aircraft. Components are fabricated and assembled at specialized facilities or areas of facilities by techs who only work with that part. Later, the fuselage, wings, empennage, avionics, and other onboard systems are brought together to form the final aircraft. Training pilots become extremely important whenever a company designs an advanced aircraft like the Rafale. For this reason, the engineers at Dassault have developed a full mission simulator capable of providing a realistic and immersive environment for pilot training. Among its many features, the Rafale FMS perfectly replicates the aircraft's cockpit, including its controls and displays. It also features a sophisticated visual system capable of recreating realistic terrain, airfields, cities, and other objects to enhance situational awareness and visual fidelity. In order to reproduce the sensations of flight, the simulator also includes a motion system, further enhancing the overall training experience. And since this is a military aircraft, the simulator can be pre-programmed with a wide range of mission scenarios that cover air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground strikes, reconnaissance, and more. Over the past few decades, the Rafale has become a favorite at air shows and other demonstrations due to its superior maneuverability and impressive aerial capabilities. Pilots worldwide praise the aircraft for its state-of-the-art avionics allowing superior situational awareness, target detection, and engagement capabilities while supporting the plane's multi-role design. The aircraft not only has a top speed of Mach 1.8, but it also utilizes stealth technology to reduce its ability to be detected by enemy forces.
The largest aircraft manufacturer in Europe is Airbus, which is also based out of France. Though the company mainly focuses on designing and producing commercial planes, it also has a long history of creating military aircraft, like the A400M Atlas. This military transport plane was first introduced in 2013. It boasts a wingspan of 139 feet and measures more than 148 feet long. Most importantly, the Atlas can carry up to 81,000 pounds of personnel and equipment over a range of several thousand miles. This makes it ideal for troop movement, supply missions, and humanitarian initiatives of all kinds. Airbus is a multinational company with facilities spread out all over the world. As such, constructing the A400 involves a lot of individual components coming together to form the complete airplane. Major parts such as the wings, fuselage sections, tail, and landing gear are produced separately using a combination of processes and materials. Nearly every piece of the aircraft will be sub-assembled in this manner and then joined together at the final location. For instance, the fuselage sections will be carefully joined together and measured using highly accurate digital devices. Meanwhile, smaller components will be assembled and tested at their own respective facilities. This dedicated testing ensures they are all functioning properly before they are installed into the final aircraft. The fuselage is typically the first section of the plane to take shape. After that, the wings, tail, and other external components will be attached. However, getting the frame of the plane together is rather simple compared to the system's integration. During this process, every wire, computer readout, and sensor must be carefully installed and tested to ensure the plane will perform as expected. Since its debut, the A400 has become widely adopted around Europe and Asia. Its biggest operator is Germany, but France, Spain, Turkey, Malaysia, and several other countries have adopted the Atlas into their aerial fleets. The plane is highly regarded for many reasons. First, Airbus's focus on tactical design ensured that the A400 could land in both conventional and unconventional environments. For instance, it can take off and land on short, unprepared runways with little to no difficulty, making it ideal for use at forward operating bases. As mentioned, the A400 has an impressive cargo capacity, especially given its size. However, it also has a long range allowing it to conduct missions over multiple continents without refueling. The A400's highly aerodynamic design contributes to its efficiency and performance. The aircraft also has a high wing configuration. When combined with its four powerful turboprop engines, 
the plane can generate enough lift to take off at a nearly vertical angle. This sort of maneuverability is extremely uncommon for a large transport aircraft, and it's a big reason why the A400 will soon become a staple in the European skies. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.